Thank you very much. How's everybody doing? Obi. You ready? Ready. Ready, 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 ready. Really ready. ready. (laughs) 240 hours ready. 230. 230. 230. 230. So let's uh, let's start from when we first ran into each other then, isn't it? That was uh, at the re-up. The re-up, the pioneer um, day party that started... Lagos. The day party culture in Lagos. Myself and Chin. Okay, okay, he's not here right now. Big up Chin for yeah. Giddy Fest, which we all enjoy. We all know Chin. Pretty much, we we decided we wanted to, uh, we 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 had been exposed to the day party culture from traveling New York, London, um, Abeya, Ibiza, and we decided we wanted to bring a taste of it to Lagos. So we started the re up in 2013 when. Um, when it was coup d'etat and the marquee kept yeah, changing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they kept switching names. But um, yeah, that was what that was kind of a good intro into the Lagos scene. You know, doing day parties and trying to get people to party in Lagos during the day, which is a very difficult, task. very difficult <laughs> and a very different thing. But eventually, we got it and um, we did it for two years and and let it go. And it was an interesting time because at that point, there are a lot of people who are moving back. You know, that was after whatever, the, the global crisis or whatever. You know, Lagos was very full of um, energy right then. Not that it's not yeah, now. Yeah, there but was a big wave. That was when the IJGB slang started out. So it was a big wave of people moving back, trying to plant their roots in Nigeria. And um, we, we took advantage of that because we understood the fact that people coming from abroad would understand the concept of a day party. So we decided to use that 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 and that was one of the reasons we only did the re-up in December just because we understood that we needed to we needed to get the the crowd the like minded crowd that understands day parties and that's why we stuck to December. Dope. So let's go a little bit further back because that's when we met, right? So let's talk about first how you met your passion for DJing or music. So was it music first that you fell into or when was the first time you even realized, boy, there's a, there's a guy in the room who's spinning two things that's making everybody dance? Like, when did you actually clock that that's a, that's a thing? The first time I discovered DJing was TBS, I want to say, <laughs> 1994, 95. Which um, DJ was it? Jimmy Jack. Go on, Jimmy Jack. Jimmy Jack. Um, shout out Jimmy Jack. Yeah, shout out Go DJ Jimmy Jack. Jimmy Jack, pioneer, pioneer Word. of the game. Jimmy Jack was playing, you know, they used to have Carnival. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. of course, mine was down there. They used to have Carnival at TBS back in the day, and Jimmy Jack was playing, and my dad was in the media and entertainment, so he had to be, you know, in these parties every now and then. This one time, we got to go with him, and... um the crowd went crazy, dangerous. Buster Rhymes Dangerous had just come out. Ooh, that's yeah. a rhythm. So the crowd went crazy when Jimmy Jack dropped Dangerous because he had mixed it with Black Girl, 90s Girl. I don't know if you know that song. I don't Black know that girl. one, but definitely not Dangerous. <laughs> so there's, there was this 90s group called Black Girls, and they had a song called 90s Girl. I'm a 90s girl. So, <laughs> Jimmy Jad played. Um, so there's a there's a part in, and I I've, I never forgot this mix. So this was the mix that made me realize, oh shit, DJs are powerful. Um, Jimmy Jad played it, and when it got to the part, there's a part in the '90s girl song that says, "Hold up, wait a minute." Okay, okay, okay. So he when he got there, he cut it and switched it to the dun, intro dun, 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 for dun, Buster yeah, Rhymes, yeah, yeah. and the crowd went. Mad. And if you know where TBS, you know about TBS. Big crowd, there's not no small hundred, five thousands, and everybody was losing it. It must have been electric, cause that place is. I, w- I was mad. like, wow, what is? What did he do that made everybody react like that? And that was that was the light bulb moment for me. And then what was your next step? What did you do? Did I mean, you, uh, back you then I was very young, so I still had to go to high school. <laughs> still had to go, still had to go to secondary school. You know, um, but even in secondary school. Shout out to SA. SA is here somewhere. We went to high school. Too. Shout <laughs> to out to SA school. on the right. Control your people on the right. So, on there, if you're with um, If you ask SA back in back in secondary school, I was a social prefect, so it kind of still, you know, I was still the party organizer. It's still bubbling <laughs> early. It's still, it's still, <laughs> I was still rocking it early, you know. But 
even then the DJing um was very DJing was very interesting to me and I really could not wait to be able to give it a shot, which eventually came in, in college when I was in uni. So I'm saying how how were you able to, you know, for, for people here who are thinking they have to perhaps suit uh, choose a, a career that looks like a paper crew, lawyer, doctor, ex You know, we're all Nigerians. So with your passion, how did you now say, okay, I'm now doing this? As um, honestly, it was a passionate, it was a passionate uh, decision. I, I've always kind of been a rebel, stubborn, you know, so it paid off with DJing. But I just kind of decided that this was, at a very young age, I realized that you make your own choices in life. What? True. You know, so while a lot of my peers were pressured by, you know, Parent, their parents' decisions and rules and stuff like that. I was always the guy that just wanted to figure out what it felt like to be on the other side. <laughs> a lot of times it yeah. got me in trouble, but I've always just been like that, you know. And that's really the the route I took with DJ um, when I figured I was going to make a lot of money. I wanted to become a party promoter at one point when I was in college, but then. I realized that I, I had to put a lot of money into it and not I might make my money back. <laughs> I didn't like that. And it's so, better to get the check <laughs> and let the other person take so the I risk. Wanted to, I, I figured, you know, I, I'd rather take on this DJing that I've always wanted to do. This is the life of the party. Money-wise, you know, you're the guy they're hiring. So why not, you know? Um, so I just stuck to my passion. I just stuck to it. Honestly speaking, it was a no-brainer for me. It's something I'd always wanted to do right from the time I had heard Jimmy Jad at TBS. Um, growing up with my dad, he was in media and entertainment, so I was around DJs like FX2. I was okay. around Kenny and oh, D Keke Kenny. and D1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, Jimmy Jad as well. My father, Dr. Olivia Jonoma. Um, who else? A lot of people. Black Baja growing up was a big influence. Motherland was around the corner from my house. Wow. So I always heard, wow. you know, the, yeah. the, and then he worked at Ray Power at one point. Can't remember his face, but I know I've been like my job before, you know. So I was around all these people, and this was really what made me realize that, okay, this is something that I wanted to do because everyone was in control of their schedules. I yeah. didn't like the typical, you know, suit and tie thing. So it was kind of, I, it was a no-brainer for me, honestly speaking. I just knew that the only thing was I needed to get done with school, finish school, so I can actually just go ahead and do what I really wanted to do, well, what I was passionate about. Fantastic. You've been mentioning like um, the people around you growing up. Did they influence your initial choices of the music you were buying to play out, or what? What? What did you start buying first? Buying, buying music. I started buying reggae. 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 Yeah. You were buying seven inches. Like why? Is, oh, Buju, Bob Buju Marley, um, Beanie Man, early Mr. Vegas and Sean Paul. On. When they were still a duo, wow. um, Lady Saw, Patra, Go on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, or my first love for music was through reggae. Okay. And then branched out into um, house. Okay. House music and then Afro beats. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you started out when it was vinyl. I started out when it was when the transition was happening. So when it was transitioning from vinyl to CDs, where you now had to have those CD books. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 500 so, CDs exactly. in one book. Yeah, like so you had books. to now go find the guy that had the vinyl to um, put it on the CD, mm -hmm. convert it to MP3 to put it on the CD and stuff like that. So I was right in between the vinyl and CD era. So that's quite an interesting time, isn't it? Because if you were caught in just the vinyl time, access to vinyl here, I think it was just a couple of places around Ted, your show market that used to sell... Well, at that time, I had moved back to the States. Okay. So college time, I was back in Boston when, when I started DJing. And when you moved so back access, here, you access, kept the same setup. Access to music was, was pretty decent. All right. Yeah, it wasn't And bad. when you moved back, that's the same setup that you kicked off. By the time I moved back to Nigeria, Serato had taken over. And then you're the Serato <laughs> yeah, DJ. Yeah, Serato had taken over, so a Serato DJ. And is DJ Obi your first choice as a DJ name? It's, it's DJ Obi wasn't my first choice, uh -huh. unfortunately. So what was the first DJ name? When, when, I, when I was in high school, I used to run track, and they used to call me AJ. AJ. 
And then, <laughs> Expand and then I that. started DJ. No, AJ is just my last name. I okay, know. okay. There's yeah, no the first two letters of my last name ah, yeah, are AJ. So DJ AJ. When I started DJ, I was gonna call myself DJ AJ, but it was just too many J's, and I was just like, it sounds it doesn't corny. look good. It doesn't look. It sounds corny. So I right. uh, stuck with Obi because I had to shorten my name in the states because everybody couldn't say Obi now. So Word. yeah. But I mean, that's quite a powerful thing because I know you as DJ Obi, you have a very distinctive brand. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, I mean, apart from even how you dress or how you play, you know, you're very, uh, you stand out still. So in this in this market now where anybody who's got a laptop and I don't know, an internet connection, they can just hit sync. How do you, how do you still stand out? So funny enough, it's funny you mentioned that there's a movement going on right now and real DJs will know about this movement, but it's a movement, the, the hashtag is, to good DJs still exist. If you look on um, Instagram, certain DJs are posting up. It's, it's the, the message behind that is it's still good or it's still a thing to be a good DJ, like to know your music. So now as a DJ, they want you to be the promoter. They want you to be the, the designer of the flyer. They want your show, social media numbers up. They want you to become a stylist. Different things. You're not just a One-on-one DJ. One-on-one jobs you that you I'm got saying? to so, do. But yeah. So what you're finding out now is anyone that looks the, looks the part can be the part, if you understand what I'm saying. But then when it now gets to actually doing the work, crunch time, they, they don't get it. They don't understand it. And that's where we stand out. Yeah. So what I've always just, my motto has always been talent over hype. Don't worry about the hype because the hype will always die down. That's very true. The talent hype will always hype. die down. If you're, real, if you're real and you're original, about what you do, it will all, you will always stand out. So stick to your talent, know, know your craft, and you will always stand, you will always be sought after. So that's one great tip. Do you have two more tips, perhaps, for budding DJs? Are there any DJs in the crowd first? Is anybody here who's predominantly a DJ? Okay, nice, there's some DJs, all right, in the back. And of course, we're here with Budweiser Mix Mag, and Mix Mag is predominantly, a, you know, is the DJ for It's crazy, I was, I, was just, I was just telling Grow, someone for, to understand what's happening here, let me like Mix Mag is such a huge deal for DJs. I know, I know right? I know, no, but I, I understand that nobody, I don't even think half the people putting this together understand what Mix Mag is. So, Mix, firstly, shout out to Mix Mag. Sh- shout out to Mix Mag for, this. This for reaching out, coming out to yeah. Nigeria. It's like a dream come true, honestly yes, speaking. Sir. Mix Mag is such a huge deal for DJs. So to have Mix Mag in Nigeria, courtesy of Budweiser, shout out Budweiser, it's it's amazing. You understand what I'm saying? Like this is you're experiencing history. This is like the vogue of fashion or like <laughs> the Time magazine of you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, I, it's I crazy. Know. So shout out to Mix Mag, you know. So no, you're gonna answer the two more tips for the DJs. Two more huh? tips. Honestly, be original. Be original. Be original. Um Put God first. It sounds cliche, but it is what it is. And mm-hmm. the competition is crazy. And truthfully, most of the things I've done, if not with God, no one else, honestly Amen speaking. Because there are opportunities all the time. Yeah. And you can you can miss some. You can but I've always thankfully gotten the right opportunities that's that fit my brand. So put God first, be original and know your craft. Amazing. Do we have a question over there? Is there a question? Is that right? All right, back left over there. Could we get a microphone somewhere over there? Field this question. Thanks. What's your name? All right, yeah. Uh, big shout out to Obi. We're all big fans. We you know, <laughs> Best DJ in, in Africa. Anyways, uh, Obi, we watched you do the longest DJ set in history. Um, we saw how physically grueling it was. Sometimes people probably thought you were going to die. For real, for real. Like, it was crazy, right? So I'm going to ask, what is the biggest thing you learned from that ordeal for your DJing and just as a person, as a human being, what was the biggest thing you learned from achieving that superhuman fit? <laughs> for real, that thing was crazy. It was You're crazy. stealing my questions. Yeah. I was coming on to that. <laughs> well, I might, as, I might as well answer yeah, that now. Um, I, I learned the fact that you can teach people things because if you think about that, that experience, Eight days out of the nine days, I only played house music. And this is Lagos where at a regular club, people frown at house music. People shun it. People just, you know, they're not feeling it. But everybody was partying to house music. 
that 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 week, mm. you know. And even after that, I have had people hit me up to say, "Yo, send me this or send me that," or they would go and party and hear house track and you know, take a clip and be like, "Oh, what song is this?" You know. And I realized that I was able to teach people about a, a, a genre of music that they didn't know that they actually liked if it was presented to them in a different way. You know, so I, I honestly believe that no knowledge is lost. You can, you can teach people something they don't know and for the, the, if they're interested in it, they will learn. Because everyone, everyone came to support me, but in turn, they learned a, a lot about music and house and how I can mix it and how I mixed it with Afro beats and how I mixed it in with, with different other genres. They heard it differently. You know what I'm saying? So that was one thing that I, I learned to teach. It improved my, my teaching as a DJ to be able to break records. Because one thing that people, people don't know about DJs is our job is not to play what is popular. Our job is not to play or to not only play what is popular, it's also teach the crowd what you don't know, what's hard, what's coming out, what's about to be hard. That's our job as well. So we are 100%. teachers as well. Yeah. And it's interesting. I wanted uh, to to pick on that point that you just had. Since you know, um, like Afrobeats is uh, is usually between 125 to 130 BPM, and usually houses in that same kind of BPA BPM range. So wouldn't it? already be quite natural that those two should mesh together. Why has it taken quite a while for us to be accustomed to that sound when the actual tempo for what we dance to is the same? Do you get what I'm saying? It's the same tempo. We're already locked in as people intrinsically to that um, BPM. I don't know. It's a bias, I guess. You know, it's, it's like, I don't know. If you don't, if with the way Nigeria is, if you did, if Nigerians don't like something, we just don't like it. But then the truth is, if you present it to them a different way, it's kind of like our leadership. Truthfully, we've Word. been we've been through <laughs> yeah. these guys, we've been yeah. through these guys already. But yeah. now we're repackaging and pushing them back out, and they're still in office. So if you if we if we can go through that, we can relearn a lot of things, you know. So I think it's just the way you present it to people, you know. The way a lot of people have heard about Budweiser before, but now you've tasted it differently. You can now pair with your music and decide that I've had this musical experience through with Budweiser, through Budweiser, by Budweiser. So I am now a fan, even if I didn't like it before. You know, so I feel it's just the way you present it. How do you mix the music? You know, if you're a good DJ, you should need to understand that people want to remain on the dance floor, so you d they don't want to stop moving. So if you if you're mixing house with any other genre and, and there's a drop that they don't like, it turns them off. So you have to learn how to be consistent. Yeah, that's... And as well, since you're talking about presenting music, because it's, it's a, it's a two-way conversation with DJs, isn't it? Like, you're presenting music to people, but at the same time, there are artists out there who want to get you to play their music. So how, how, what's the best way that people can present their music to you to get, to get into your record box? The way I would really love music these days, and just technology has changed everything. So as an artist, if you're going to present your music to a DJ, the best way to do it right now is through a flash drive. That's the way I would love to get music from artists, not WhatsApp, not email. Because truthfully, if you WhatsApp me on the spot while I'm, at a, while I'm playing a set, I, I'm not going to have the time to send it to my laptop and then all that stuff. If you email it to me, I'll have to exit out of Serato or, you know, just minimize Serato, go back to my email, try, it's too long. Put long. it on, a, yeah, put it on a flash drive. I can put it in my USB and I can play the track on the spot. And that's free advice for any artist that's out there. That's the best way to get your music to any DJ. If you put it on a flash drive, they can't deny it because you can, except their laptop doesn't have a flat, um, USB um, port. But if you have a USB port, Put okay. on a flash drive and send it out. So that's a great piece of advice for anybody, really. Before we go, I just wanted to know, what was the inspiration? Because you're the world record holder now. What, what made, because you talk to DJs all over the world and they say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the longest DJ set X, Y, Z. But you actually did it. So what was your inspiration doing it? How many toilet breaks did you take? <laughs> Somebody said I should ask you, were you wearing nappies? I said, I ain't going to ask him that. But uh, and, and, and the other side of it, now that you've come out the other side, what next? You know, because you've already, nobody's beaten this record. You're still holding it. So what made you want to do it? How did you do it? Okay, and so first question is the inspiration. Do? So the inspiration behind it was 
I just moved, well, I hadn't just moved to Nigeria, but I, I moved back to Nigeria. I've been in Nigeria for a little bit, and I figured out the market, and I was looking for a the perfect PR plan to not only hit Nigeria, but globally as well, because at that time, I started using the hashtag global DJ, global DJ OB. So it was like a, I need to back up my shit talk. <laughs> for real? Yeah, you know I'm saying? So... Um, I was at a conference here in Lagos at Civic Center and someone brought up the fact that Black Coffee had tried to do it. And I was like, I didn't even know that existed. You could do that. And I went on my phone, Google, checked everything now, found out, yeah, he tried to do it but didn't do it. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. That's my, sh that's, that's it. I'm going to do this and put my name out there. And That's you built a team around you because you couldn't just... It was really it. just myself and uh, my manager, Asa. Oh, we okay. kept that a secret for a good almost one year because we had started planning it from 2015 okay. and we did it in 2016. So we went around and even when we had to sit with sponsors, we had to let them know they couldn't talk about it. They couldn't... The conversation couldn't leave the room and which was successful. It was successful because a lot of people thought we were not going to be able to do it. Haters. Yeah, so they were just like, yeah, 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 we won't talk about it, don't worry. And, and it's like, these guys, you know, <laughs> until it started happening and people that were there witnessed some sponsors coming on the spot to be like, oh, just hold my product real quick. And I'm like, no, I had a meeting with you about this. You didn't believe it, so take a, you know what I'm saying? But um, that was the inspiration, a global PR plan to put DJ OB on the map to say, you know, okay, we've been hearing his name, now we can ignore him. You know, that kind of thing. Because it was one of those things where I figured just being a good DJ wasn't enough. I needed to do something else to get my name out there. And then um, bathroom breaks. So the way, <laughs> the, way the, the world record experience worked, I had 20 minutes after every four hours. So when I started out, I, had to, I tried to pile it up. But truthfully, in 24 hours, you only get two hours. So... I don't think anybody here can sleep for two, just two hours. You know what I'm saying? You must have been delirious, yeah, man. Dude, by day three, I was hallucinating. I couldn't recognize some of my family, all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Honestly, I thought I was... I, at one point, I thought I was in my uncle's house, but it was happening in Lecky. My boy Lynx is here. I couldn't even recognize, you know, my own, like, fam, <laughs> my closest friends, because I, I was talking all kinds of nonsense at that point. But thank God, you know, I survived. It was after the fact. It was after the world record I found out that if your body stays awake for a certain amount of time, the next time you sleep, you can die. So before I went, what? before I started the world record, I didn't know that this could actually end my life. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't, wow. it wasn't until after the fact. Well, we're very glad you didn't yeah. end your life. Like, like, we, we <laughs> yeah. You know, when I, let's yeah. give a round of applause. We still got DJ yeah, OB yeah, here yeah, with yeah. us, yeah? You know, I apologize. We haven't had as long as we wanted. Um, but can we get one more round of applause for DJ OB? Thank you. Thank yeah? you. Thank you. A big thank you to uh, Mix Mag, to Budweiser, to everybody else who's been on the panel earlier on today. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much.